And now we're going to actually solve the problem we've been going on about for so long of the disk of mass m moving, what we're going to call vi, the initial speed of the disk, crashing into the bar, which has the same mass. That makes the equations come out a lot nicer when it has the same mass. And it has uh, length l. We need to know that. And it's at rest. And they go through an elastic collision. So this taps that, pushes the bar forward. It starts to spin. We now accept that it can spin because this thing had angular momentum, et cetera. We're putting the origin in the middle of the bar. So I'll draw that part just to help us see what's going on. And we I further label the things. The disk slows down to Vf. So this is an unknown we're looking for, the final velocity of the disk. The center of mass of the bar goes to Vcm. It was 0, increases the Vcm. And then the bar is spinning around at omega, which technically should be a vector like this into the blue. So our three unknowns we're looking for are the final velocity, the center mass velocity, and omega in terms of how fast it was approaching and the masses and the lengths. So let's see if we can do it. Basically, we just apply conservation laws. So we have to conserve the translational momentum. And that's where we start. So m, v initial, is the only translational momentum we had to start with. And in the end, we have m times v final of the disk plus m, same m. Fortunately, they have the same mass, times vcm. So in our world of the same mass, the mass constantly cancels out. So we have vi equals v final plus vcm. So that will be one of our equations that we will label 1. Three unknowns. We probably need three equations. So let's keep going. Um, next, let's conserve L, angular momentum. So the initial angular momentum is the disk moving relative to this origin is where we're going to do our calculation of L. Let's see. So we know we want to think about it. The easiest is right when it gets there. That's the case where you can think of it as a mass going in a circle, sort of. So we say, well, it's just m times vi times the radius, which is a half of L. So the initial is m vi times L over 2, just like we showed in the previous uh, lectures. And let's see. Then, after they hit, it slows down. So, but it still has angular momentum relative to this origin. So it's, then it's just m vf l over 2. It's the same distance from the origin at the instant that they hit. And then we need the angular momentum of the bar rotating about the origin, which was set at its center of mass. So it's rotating about the origin. So it's just i omega plus i omega. So there's two of our unknowns, Vf and i omega. So we can simplify this one since our masses match and there's Ls everywhere. We can get rid of some Ms here. Call this Vi L over 2 equals Vf L over 2 plus, and now let's plug in for the moment of inertia of a disk. It's 1 12th ML squared. So 1 12th, the M we already canceled. So the M went away with these Ms. L squared omega. And then we can simplify it even a little bit more. We can uh, say, let's cancel one of the L's here. And then we get VI equals VF. Uh, the initial velocity equals the final velocity plus, oh, we're also going to cancel the 2. Initial velocity is final velocity plus 1 sixth of L omega. And that is equation two from our second conservation law. Yeah. And now it's an elastic collision. Let's conserve the kinetic energy. All right. Initially, only the disk has initial kinetic energy. 1 half m vi squared. Oops. vi squared. 
And then it slows down to Vf, so it has that translational kinetic energy, plus 1 half mvf squared. All right. And then the third, and then let's see, the bar is both translating and rotating about this point. So it's 1 half mvcm squared. That's its translational energy. Okay. And then we need its rotational kinetic energy, which you may recall is 1 half i omega squared. There's all the terms. Okay. So we can simplify that. Clearly, we can get rid of the m's, and we get rid of the halves. And the m will go away there in a second. And we're left with uh, vi squared equals vf squared plus vcm squared. And now let's deal with this. Um, I for the uh, bar is 1 12th ml squared, the m we already canceled. It's 1 12th uh, L squared, and then we have our omega squared. And this is equation 3. It's as far as we go. All right. So now what we have is three equations. And what do we have? We have three unknowns. Recall, they were the final velocity of the disk, the center mass velocity of the bar and omega of the bar. And this is the end of the big insight in this problem. The idea is three conservation laws, three equations, three unknowns, and you can solve it. The next part is to actually combine these to solve for Vf, uh, omega, and Vcm. So I'm going to do it, but I want to stress that the rest of this is just algebra tricks to get there efficiently. Okay, if you just were given this to do off the top of your head, you never done it before, you might go in algebraic circles all day and never get there. You just have to know where the tricks are. But I'm going to do it, one, to show you how to find some of these tricks, but also that we need the answer to have more insight in the next lecture. Okay, so we do want to know what these answers are, and they come out pretty simple since I set the masses equal. A lot of stuff cancels. Let's keep going here. Turn on our fancy lights. And we're going to start with something you've seen before. Whenever you have the kinetic energy and the momentum conservation mixed together, you use sort of a difference of two squares approach on the kinetic energy. So we're going to um, apply, apply is a weird word, difference of two squares to three. Because right, that's the one with all the squared terms in it. And we're going to write uh, vi squared minus vf squared um, equals vcm squared uh, plus 1 twelfth l squared omega squared. Okay. And the only reason I did that is this difference we can now write as vi plus vf times vi minus vf. Difference of two squares equals VCM squared, center mass squared, plus 1 twelfth L squared, omega squared. There we go. And now what we're going to do is take this and we're going to divide 1 into this, meaning this whole equation. So we're going to divide the left side of 1 into that and the right side of 1 into that because you're allowed to do that because they're all equations. So the left side of 1, if we manipulate it a little bit, is vi minus vf. So go back to your notes and check. We can pull the vf to the other side. We have vi minus vf equals vcm. So if we divide this by vi minus vf, it's going to cancel that one. So we're going to get vi plus vf. And then this side divided by vcm is all that was left on the right. So you divide it there, you just get a single vcm. Cancels one of them. Plus, and you divide it here, and you get L squared omega squared over 12 VCM. All right, I believe that is all everything I got, yes. So, yeah. So then this is another equation that we want to keep up with. Here we go. All right, so we'll call this uh, 4. See, if you're trying to do this, it helps to get down to a simple form and then number it and then use it again later. You kind of have to do it in an organized way. The next thing we're going to do is subtract 1 minus 2. And by that, I don't mean negative 1. I mean equation 1 
minus equation 2. Let's see. So 1 minus 2, why would we do that? It must be that, yes, if we subtract the left sides, we're both vi. So that's 0. All right. And then the right sides both had a vf. That cancels. So all we're left with is for 1 is vcm minus, and then all that's left on the equation 2 is 1 sixth L omega. Right, yes. So that minus that. And we can rearrange that and see, oh, VCM is very simply related to the final uh, angular, to the uh, angular velocity of the rod. Its center mass motion and its angular velocity have a fairly simple relationship. We'll call that equation, I believe, we're up to 5. There we go. Okay, getting there. And now we're going to take this 5 that we got for VCM, we're going to plug it into 4. So let's put 5 into 4. Okay, so let's see, it's going to go there, it's going to go there. And it's equal to 1 sixth L omega. So that's going to make a little bit of a mess. So VI plus VF, right, equals. Um, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, we're doing it to uh, get rid of L omega. We're going to keep VCM. Yeah. Equals VCM, center mass velocity, plus, and then this term, L omega, you can see, is 6 VCM. All right, and it's squared. So it's 36 VCM squared. That's the L omega here, L squared omega squared here, over 12 VCM down there. Ah, yes. Okay, so we simplify that a little bit, and we get that down to initial velocity plus final velocity. 36 over 12, I believe, is 3. 12, yeah, is 3. VCMs cancel down to just 1. So 3 VCM plus 1 VCM is 4 center mass velocities. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, yes. So now this is equation 6. Ah, they're getting shorter. It's a good sign if they're getting shorter. If you do this and they get longer, yeah, you've messed up. So they must get shorter. Now we're going to plug one, the, vol the answer for 1 VF into 6. We better get some answers because we're running out of the board here. So 1 VF into 6. So we take this thing we just got, go up to the top and say, what was VI, uh, VF for? VF is VI minus VCM, according to equation 1. So it's VI is 6. VF is VI minus VCM. All right, so we put that in, equals 4 VCM. And you can see we did that because now we have the center mass velocity in terms of VI. At least we will in a minute. We have 2 VI equals 5 VCM. So now we know that VCM equals um, 4, the, I mean, 2 fifths. I can do it. I could probably do it without my notes. 2 fifths VI. And let's label that equation. No, hey, that's the answer. It's one of the answers. I don't have to label that anything. And once you get one of them, the rest starts falling apart uh, pretty fast. For example, once we have that VCM is 2 fifths VI, we go back to equation 1, therefore VF must be 3 fifths VI. We'll just plug it in right away. It must be 3 fifths VI is our other answer. And uh, we can also get omega. Uh, the easiest place to get omega was probably... Um, here. No, no, not there. Uh, where do we want to get omega from? Hmm. Six. <laughs> where? Oh, there's a hundred places. Where, where do we want to get omega? Hmm. Let's get omega from two. There we go. Let's go to two to get omega and say vi equals uh, vf, which is three-fifths vi, uh, plus one sixth L omega um, plus, uh, no, let's not get it there. Let's just state as an exercise for the student. I can't remember what it is in my notes that omega is 12 VI over L. Sorry about that. Don't worry. Nobody's watching at this point. Everybody's turned it off. So, there you go. so you plug in all those values, you get that omega is 12 VI over L. And now we have everything. We can kind of check it. You had some initial velocity VI. Surely the disk had to slow down after it struck the bar. It did, slowed down to three-fifths. Uh, surely the bar is going slower than the initial disk was going. Yeah, two-fifths. 
And yeah, it's spinning around in some angular velocity omega. So now that we have those, let's see what they can tell us.